about time to start. So good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's brown bag. My name is Petr Vacek, and we are Salsita Software. Uh, today's topic is tips and tricks for pleasant coding experience. Uh, what we're going to talk about today. Um, first, we'll learn how to save ourselves some hassle with bookmarklets. Then also a little bit about what a clean code might be and why it matters. And we will also discuss some ways to deal uh, with the most common problems in what you would call an ugly code. Our full stack team probably knows uh, the techniques, uh, but there are many among us that are not so keen and might find these useful. And it uh, will also be a good repetition for you guys from the full stack team. So uh, let's go. And the first first thing, what are what are bookmarklets anyway? Uh, they are also known as uh, favelets, and they have been around li since like forever. Uh, I found out that. Uh, they were present in Netscape Navigator 2 in 1995, at least according to Wiki, uh, Wikipedia, and not not Wikivota, sorry. Uh, uh, so you guys probably might know bookmarklets. Uh, if you don't uh, know bookmarklets, please imagine that you want to run some code, but you only want to run it in your own browser. Well, you could use the console in your browser, uh, but did you know that you can also use the address bar? Instead of a typical URL, you put JavaScript, colon, and curly braces in the address bar, and then you can execute any code inside of the curly braces. But uh, what if you want to run the code frequently? And what if you don't want to lose the code when you close the tab? Guess what? You can save the fake URL as a bookmark thus creating a bookmarklet. If, if you put the JavaScript and colon and curly braces into the URL of your bookmark, you can then paste any JavaScript code inside of it and create a bookmarklet, uh, making yourself a button in the browser and being able to uh, click on it and run the code that's inside the curly braces anytime. And there are some caveats because the bookmark URLs are stored in a single line. So don't use line commands, use multi-line commands. So no uh, two slashes, and you need to use slash and asterisk. And you also need to use a semicolon after each statement. So apologies to our CEO, Matt. Uh, I know that uh, he likes to omit uh, the semicolons after statements, but not this time. Uh, so uh, bookmarklets also need to be written in native JavaScript. Uh, well, it doesn't really have to, but uh, you need to transpile it from another language. So that's another league. And now for some usage. How can this be useful to you? My favorite example of bookmarklet is environment switcher. Uh, as you develop, your code progresses through various environments. First, you usually develop on your local environment, and then you push some commits. They go to a pull request review, and um, if you get approved, then you might move to some QA instance where it's uh, subjected to some tests. And if everything goes well, it goes to production. But if something goes wrong uh, or when a bug is reported on production, uh, you need to switch between environments quickly to investigate the behavior under different set of data or uh, with different configuration or just to test if your code modifications solve the problem on your local environment. You probably know the drill. So here is an example of an environment switcher for uh, eBay QSX project. This is what it looks like. So 
Whenever I need to switch environment, I just click the button in the bookmarks toolbar. Then this window with links pops up. And with a second click, I can select my desired environment. Uh, the URL changes, but all my search or get URL parameters and also the hash are kept. The bookmarklet isn't part of the project code base and won't leak into wrong hands. It is stored safely in your browser, ready at your disposal anytime. Uh, it's pretty handy, don't you think? Uh, another way to leverage the bookmarks, bookmarklet, uh, might be to store code for sites that you do not have control over. So you could, for example, override the cascading style sheets uh, on some page to implement yourself an ad hoc dark mode or for uh, to use it for your favorite site which doesn't support dark mode or you could write a custom scraper to pull the prices of products on your favorite e shop whatever have you uh, i'll leave it to you to come up with other possible usages of bookmarklets and i'm sure you'll find ways to use this to save some of your precious time uh, then you can use the time for what really matters which is writing cleaner code. Um, what, is, what is this clean code? What, why? Why would I do this? Well, um, there isn't a simple answer for what uh, clean code is or what it looks like. But generally, it's a bunch of techniques to make your code more readable, organized, manageable, and maintainable. Um, there is, unfortunately, no silver bullet. Uh, everything is sort of an art when you code. So it's pretty subjective what a good code looks like. Uh, but keep in mind that it might be you who needs to read the code next time. So do yourself a favor. And also remember that with great power comes great responsibility. Uh, and this is especially important because allegedly the number of programmers doubles every five years. So you are probably going to meet a lot of juniors. So please be compassionate. Uh, clean code as a whole is a pretty broad topic for a single brown bag. So I've just selected a few common problems that I've encountered over my career, be it in Salsita or elsewhere. And you don't have to be afraid. Some of the techniques are pretty simple. Um, so this is a picture from NetBeans configuration. In case you don't know NetBeans, it is a free integrated development environment, uh, pretty much like VS Code. And it has been around for a while. It is free. It runs on Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. And it used to be popular for development of apps in Java, PHP, and other languages. It could also be used for JavaScript development. Um, and what you see over here is configuration of hints. The editor in NetBeans would used to bully you with these hints whenever you did something suspicious. I'm showing this to illustrate that uh, clean coding is not just a product of my twisted mind. Uh, there are people far more experienced agreeing that this is good. So let's take a look at a few of these and how to solve them. Uh, in this example, we have a React component, which we instantiate. And you can immediately see that you cannot see all the properties. You need to use the scroll bar uh, in the editor. But the solution is actually really simple. Uh, here you can see the long component broken such that there is a line for each property. You can use, you do the same with HTML tags and their attributes. And I used to be pretty upset whenever I encountered a row that is too long. But only recently I learned that you can hold shift while turning your mouse wheel. And that way you can move the horizontal scroll bar instead of the vertical one. But even if you pull the scroll bar, you won't see the rest of the file. So please keep your rows short. Uh, so what if you have a too long row? 
you just break it like you just saw. Uh, breaking the rows also makes the diff in Git look better in consequent modifications. And uh, the old school teaches us that 80 characters per row is used to be the standard. This was due to punch cards and all the terminals and stuff. Nowadays, 160 characters is probably still okay. Um, just don't set the max number of characters too high. There are still use cases like git three-way merge where you need uh, triple the amount. So the best thing you can do for yourself in this regard is to use automated tools like ESLint and Pertier to do the stuff for you. Here is another example of a row being too long. This is unfortunately something that ESLint and Prettier won't help you with. At least it doesn't work for me with the settings on our project. But the solution is once again very simple. You break the line. This time you break it by splitting the string into fragments shorter than the row. And uh, subsequently by concatenating them, uh, the fragments with a plus. The potential drawback is uh, in case you need to insert additional text, uh, if the fragments with the newly inserted text exceed the row length, you're back to the original problem and you need to, guess what, defragment. Uh, you can keep the fragments a bit shorter to have some space for additional words. Now, another issue you might encounter is having too long methods or functions. Uh, why is this a problem? Uh, ideally, you want the whole function to fit into a single editor screen. So 20 to 40 lines max is probably OK. 200 rows will probably not fit. So uh, what you can do is split the method into smaller function or smaller methods and compose them. Uh, this will probably also help you uh, against the repetition of the code. Uh, you can do the same with uh, the whole classes and components. You can split them into smaller ones, uh, which is also probably something that leads us to solid principles. Uh, we cannot cover the, those, unfortunately, in this round back, uh, but it's a good thing to read through if you have the time. I uh, recommend it. So let's make it all short, right? Most of the time, yes, that would be the uh, right solution, but not always. Don't take this too far. There is a Stack Overflow site called Code Golf. Uh, people in there contest in solving various problems with the least number of characters. Techniques they use are often at the expense of clarity of the code. It is just a hobby, it does not belong to production environment. And if you don't believe me, just go look at the examples there. And honestly ask yourselves if you'd like to deal with this kind of code all day. In my humble opinion, you would not. I certainly wouldn't. Uh, now, um, one of the problems you might also encounter is excessive uh, indentation. Using tabs and or spaces, whatever you have in your project, is pretty useful when you uh, try to understand the code, when you try to read it. Um, but uh, there are some caveats in this. And when you indent too many times, like you can look at uh, line number 17 on this example, uh, there are like five or six uh, indentations. So that is really not optimal. You see that? Uh, the function is not really that beautiful. And uh, one of the ways to deal with this is to use more functions, like I just said, split some part of the code into different functions. But in this case, uh, what you might find useful is using the guard clause pattern. Uh, but first things first, uh, you can see a function in here that um, takes the number of the month in the year and the year itself, and it returns the last day of the month. It's a pretty simple function, uh, and uh, it's a bit long, 
and um, the indentation is uh, making it hard to read. But the good thing is that this is in a function because um, when we are in a function, we have the advantage of being able to return. So one way you can improve this is when you realize that uh, whenever you um, use, use the return statement, you uh, get outside of the function. So um, the first thing that you should realize is that you don't need the else uh, clause of the if statement. You just uh, leave the code uh, and let it run because in the positive case, when the statement is truthy, um, the, the function is going to exit using the return. So you don't, you don't really need the else thing. So you can refactor it into this. Now, this isn't the end. Uh, you can still do something more when you realize that uh, you have uh, statements that are just a single line. So you realize that you don't need the blocks. Suddenly, your function might look a little bit like this. Now comes a little bit harder um, phase of the refactoring because you need to realize that you can rearrange these statements. So you can use the line on uh, the line number 120 as the first statement in the function. And then you can uh, rearrange the things. Um, and this is something that leads you to use less identification and the end result might look like something, might look something like this. As you can see, we never surpass the second level of uh, indentation, and we have a uh, decent flow in here. Why is this important? This is important because um, this is a pretty simple example, but sometimes you encounter complex logic in uh, the applications you write, and uh, the conditions uh, may change a bit. And uh, when the condition changes, sometimes some conditions are no longer useful because um, they are checking for some property that doesn't exist anymore or something. So you delete some of the ifs, which means that you need to change the identification in an example like this. And this results in uh, you uh, pushing a git uh, commit that has a ugly diff a noisy one, I would say, uh, because um, you deleted a few lines and you've modified a few lines only by um, decreasing or increasing the indentation, uh, which is a bit unfortunate because um, the interpret of the language uh, doesn't really care about the tabs or the spaces that you put in there and the application still behaves, behaves the same. So it isn't a useful information uh, delivered to you via the git diff. So please use the guard clause pattern. Uh, now uh, you might ask, uh, mm, but what about performance? If we if we uh, if we do uh, the changes that you've just suggested, maybe it wouldn't be so optimal. Well, the argument is pretty easy. It's the resource standpoint. Electricity for machines interpreting slightly suboptimal code is cheap. However, the wages of people trying to debug a hard to read code are pretty costly. So I think that if you do need to worry about computational performance, you probably, A, came up with a very bad solution to a problem, or B, use the wrong tool, which is pretty much the same. You came up with a very bad solution to a problem. Uh, you should probably realize that JavaScript and TypeScript is not known for its speed in particular. There are other advantages to this language. So you might think uh, a little bit about that. I also have some few um, honorable mentions uh, that didn't fit into my brown bag, unfortunately, but I would still like to mention them uh, to so that you think about these things when you uh, work with the code. And the first and most important honorable mention in my 
point of, uh, in my opinion, is uh, how you name variables, constants, functions, enums, classes, basically everything you work with. Uh, don't worry, you can keep uh, using const i equals zero in your uh, four cycles. Uh, that's a pretty simple example that I guess everybody uh, mm, should accept or understand that it's an iterator. But uh, in more complex or unknown or domain specific uh, cases, please use a proper name for your variables or constant. And ideally use something that is pretty unique. I know that some people uh, don't like really long variable or method or class names or stuff. But there is the advantage that uh, you don't mix those things up. Uh, whereas when you mm, name a function something like count or something similar like that, uh, you might do so in some class and there might be another class using the same name of method. And when you need to refactor the method or work with it or um, do something about it, uh, you have a lot of false positives when you search around the code base to see where the usages are. So please think about it and uh, maybe why not use a longer name for your variables? Uh, sometimes you don't need to use variables at all. Um, I'm uh, myself, I'm not a big fan of um, decomposition. When you take an object and you decompose it into primitive uh, properties, um, because you still have the original object that you decompose, then you can address uh, the properties through the object. It's not like it's making a copy or something. You're just making a new variable, which makes the code longer. But sometimes it does have its advantages. So take it with a grain of salt and just think about it, whether it would be better, shorter, whether there would be advantages of not using the deconstruction pattern in JavaScript. Another honorable mention is switch statements. Um, sometimes the switch statements can be replaced with maps or even simple objects. When uh, you make an object key for each of the mm, case of the switch. And sometimes uh, the switch statement can be avoided altogether if you use enough classes, which have like the same interface for each of the cases. Sometimes you, you can avoid that. Sometimes it's just because you're using the switch maybe unknowingly to run some code which is specific to some case, which could be handled by using the right class. So yeah. Also, one of the techniques that you can use to make your code more readable is to introduce new constants or variables to use in if condition. Sometimes I've noticed that there are if conditions that are pretty lengthy. Uh, they have multiple statements and they're quite long and uh, there are many logical operators uh, between them. And you can take the long calculations and um, store the value into uh, a constant or a variable. And then you can use the mm, variable itself in uh, the if condition. Uh, making it fit into a single line and not having to split it into multiple lines to make it more readable and thus making the code more compact and more readable. You also get the meaning of the condition that is being uh, tested. So there are many advantages to sometimes using this. Mm. Uh, one of the things that I've also uh, noticed is uh, please Try not to nest too many try catch uh, clauses into themselves in order to catch in the same function and stuff. And um, please recycle the exception that you catch uh, in case you need to like react into some exception, like you need to close a resource, like a pointer to a file, or when you need um, to close a transact or roll back a transaction or something. And then you might not need to, you, you might not know what to do then. Um, well, mostly, mo most of the time, the best thing you can do is 
to just rethrow the same uh, exception or object that you just called. So when you catch, for example, something you call x, you can throw x back. OK, so um, to summarize this brown bag, we have talked about how you can save your scripts as browser bookmarks with bookmarklets. And this should hopefully provide you some uh, comfort uh, when you work. Uh, we also talked about how important it is to stop, uh, take a deep breath, and to think about the readability of your code. There are always multiple ways to express the solution uh, with languages like JavaScript. And code can be significantly improved even with simple techniques. There are usually drawbacks to the techniques too, so you need to consider the pluses and uh, the pros and cons and use it with moderations. And don't worry, you'll get better with it in time. And uh, if you have any uh, trouble, uh, reach out for help at the developer's uh, Slack channel when you're stuck. And I'm, I'm certain we can recommend some solution to you. So thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, now's the right time to ask.